And today we'll be looking at something special and interesting in response to, of course, questions that were asked. We value your questions. That's why we provide answers to them. And there were three questions in one that were asked by somebody quite interesting and that are relevant to you. person asked the question, Pastor, how long should one court before the man gets on one knee? And then took it a step further, adding to this question, is a man getting on one knee to propose biblical? <laughs> Get ready to answer the question for the person. Then the person went a step further and said, what's the point of engagement? If the couple already knows that they were aiming for marriage before starting courtship. So what's the purpose of engagement if you already know you are aiming for marriage before starting courtship? So I, I couldn't quite understand that question. So I thought of asking the wise people of God that we have here to provide us with an answer. So who would like to try? Last one. Let's start with the last one. So the last question says, uh, what's the point of engagement if the couple already knew that they were aiming for marriage before starting courtship? So who has one person who wants to give it a try? Ah, uh, you. <laughs> Don't worry. No, maybe you try the next one, the next one. The next one, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to you. Who wants to try this one? Because Caroline is very special. If I give her the opportunity now, she'll dissect the question. Who wants to try the first one? Okay, if you don't want to try, I'll point you to, to give us an answer. Okay, so the first one, the, the very first one, which is the last one, says, what's the point of engagement if the couple already knew that they were aiming for marriage before starting courtship? So where, where do we start from with that question? Do we, okay, how is the order like? Is it Courtship, engagement, marriage, or marriage, then courtship, then or how is it meant to be like? Those of you that are married, how did you do your marriage? Forget about my own. How did you do your marriage? Did you court, engage, or did you marry first before you engaged and then you courted? Or did you engage and then you courted, then you married? Please, can you explain to us? How did you marry? If you are married in the house, can we see your hand? Don't disown your spouse, please. Can we see your hand? The Lord is watching you big time. Can we see your hand? So we have married. Those at the back are not married. So you are all divorced. <laughs> You're married, right? Okay, can we see your hand again? Before the Holy Ghost and the congregation. Okay, beautiful. So we are all seeing your hand. So in fact, the majority of those that are married are actually behind. Not at the front. So the, the answer to the question should come from behind, right? So who wants to give it a try? Is it marriage, courtship, uh, engagement, courtship, or courtship, engagement? How is it like? Or did you even think of marrying the person? Or you just, or the Holy Ghost just came and said, this is your wife in whom I'm well pleased? Yes. Eh? <laughs> Dickie Neville, bring microphone. Dickie Neville said yes. Oh, bring microphone. <laughs> Dickie Neville is going to answer now. <laughs> Thinking, Debbie, how is, how is it meant to be like? Oh, he, he answered. He already said yes. So I was wondering what he said yes to. Yes, man of God. I love you so much. You are amazing. I, I think love you for loving me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you right. for the opportunity. You are blessed. You are blessed. Um, Don't worry. It's, it's you, 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 you asked whether it's biblical. Yeah. Yes. You no, 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 not, okay. not the getting right. on one knee, but the yeah, I'm going courtship. To, I'm going to come to the question okay. about courtship and, and, yeah. and engagement and getting married. Yes. The perfect example. Yes. Joseph and Mary. Yes. Joseph, Mary was betrothed to Joseph. But 
in, in those days, you were not, they were not allowed to do the courtship and such. But they were, it's, it's like one was, was um, you know, the families, they'll say, okay, you, you're going to get married to this, this person. For reasons, based on to the families, mm. the mothers or the fathers, they would have seen, well, there are characteristics in that family or characteristics in that man. Mm. That would be, uh, that would uh, complement their, their daughter. Mm. And in such a way that she will not stray away from the, the beliefs and the faith. Mm. Because they believed in God. So in, that, in those days, anyone else could have come. Mm. Maybe an Amorite or whatever it is that would have come to, 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 to get married to Mary and would have swayed her away from her God mm. at that particular moment. So in this day and age, well, yes, people do quote each other. You do ask somebody out or you, you want to find out whether that person is, is, has got the same, the same, same, same faith and characteristics of yourself. Because yes, you might want to get married to somebody. You get married to someone and just go, okay, yes, yeah. Pastor Sita, let's get married. And yet, maybe she does not even believe in... No, and you need I'm to just, see her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, yes. I'm just giving her as an example. Yes. Uh, maybe she, she believes in, in God and, and, and Jesus, just the same way as I do. Yes. That makes things a little bit easier. Yes. But if you, if you tend to say, okay, evangelist, evangelist TK, go out, and she, he goes out there wherever he works. Mm. He picks up a nurse, maybe from his workplace. Yes. That same nurse might not even... And 90% of, 80% of the time, some of them don't even believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you just say, okay, hey, can you, can you marry me? Yeah. Oh, well, there are two people that are marrying with different lifestyles altogether. Yeah. That's even, that's a recipe for disaster. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. He has given an elaborate response to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's okay. Uh, one of the things... Um, I could pick out from your response. Is there somebody else that wants to add something to it? Courtship, marriage? Anybody else who wants to add? Oh, evangelist. Thank you. Evangelist wants to... Somebody else? Today is At the back? Okay. Today. Yes, let's have the person. Then we'll come to evangelist. Today is Father's Day. Today is Father's Day. No, Father's is it? But the Father's Day. Oh, ah, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say Happy Father's Day to all the men. <laughs> All right, let's hear. Yes, who wanted to say something there? You are all important, and so we, we want to take what you have to say because we know it's important. Yes, yes. Is that Sister Lizzie? Ah, amazing. You are blessed. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Um, you are blessed. Sorry, sir, can you please repeat the question? Okay. <laughs> she came to ask me the question. Okay. <laughs> That's women for you, you know. Okay, uh, uh, let me repeat the question again as it is, okay. Um, what's the point of engagement if the couple uh, already knew that they were aiming for marriage before they started courtship? Praise the Lord. Okay, from my own point of view, I think the purpose for engagement would be yes. to know if you are compatible. Okay. Yes, because um, it's more than just um, the spiritual aspect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, so you have to know yourself. Oh. It doesn't have to be doing yeah. those things yeah. that are not. But you have to, you know, spend some time together, get to know yourself, get to oh. know if if what you think that person actually is, is mm. actually what the person is. Mm. Yes, so there's some kind of communication the both of you have to engage. Yes. And then, engage, um, courtship also involves getting to know families. Mm. So it's, it, it doesn't end with you and him, or yeah. she and him, right? It gets, to, it gets beyond knowing each other. So you have to know families, you really have to know the person's background. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And um, another question I wanted to answer was, what's the need for engagement? Uh -huh. Or is it courtship, engagement, marriage? I mm. think it is courtship, engagement, and marriage. Mm. Yeah, although for me, I don't think the engagement part is necessary mm. because I wasn't engaged. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she has just, she I has reviewed her it. husband. I hope your husband is watching. <laughs> so, I got... We met. Yes. He came to my house. Yes. 
and fixed the date. That was it. Wow. So there was no no proposal. Straightforward. We already knew that we were getting married. So Glory. We caught it. He came to my house, met my father for the first time. Wow. And fixed the date. That was it. Glory! Can somebody shout glory? glory? That's amazing. That's a wonderful testimony. Let, let's round up that question with evangelist. Evangelist, yes. What did you want to add to it? Uh, th thank you, Pastor. Uh, I just want to add in a little bit. There is a worldly way of doing things, yes. and there is a godly way of doing things. Mate, kaba, yeah. So, what has happened of late is we have brought things from the world into the church mm -hmm. and beautify the church with things of the world. Mm. Because how it goes, first in church, for you to pronounce the word marriage, you are ready to marry. Mm -hmm. In church, it's not a trial and error method. In the world, you have got 16 ladies, you would get this one drop, they say it's okay, you are checking. Mm -hmm. But in the house of God, when you are ready for marriage, that's when you open your eyes to see if there's someone that you can marry. So then, that's why when, when the pastor comes in, you both go to the pastor, I go to the pastor, I say, pastor, I found a flower in the house, and I intend to speak to them. You might have uh, been fellowshipping with them, just fellowshipping, finding out what they like in fellowshipping in the church, in the cell, in your department, all that you can pick it up. Then when you get to the pastor, this is Brother Jebo, we go to the pastor. They call Sister Maria. Sister Maria, when she's called by the pastor, it's an open thing in the church. Mm. This is what is there. Sister Maria can say, yes, he has said that, but my heart is not there. Mm. Then he can bring another one to the pastor. It's not an issue. Mm. But outside in the world, we do trial and error. You get this one, run with them. That's why you find in church, we don't... Some churches, they do that engagement thing, which is fake life. Because ladies want to say, look at this finger, I'm engaged. And then you hear some saying, I had five engagements, now I'm married now. I praise the Lord and testify. <laughs> yes, you have heard those a lot of times. So, according to the house of God, our courtship is through when you go to the pastor and you both agree. Wow. Pastor now gives you direction to follow. This is what you are going to do. This is what you are going to do. Then you move. We don't come together to fail that marriage. Once you come together, you are ready to marry, and you follow the instruction. The marriage will come to pass. Praise you, God. Can somebody give the uh, evangelist a big hand? <laughs> Glory to God. That's amazing. That's amazing. So there's a God way of doing things, yes. and there's a worldly way of doing things. So we follow the word of God. We follow the word of God and we allow ourselves to be led by the spirit of God when it comes to such things as courtship and marriage. And don't do things the way others do it just because they did it that way and it looked nice. So you don't end up the way others end up when things are no longer nice. And that's why it's always important. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will not lead you. When you look through the Old Testament into the New Testament, the Spirit of God will not lead you in all kinds of directions. He will not lead you um, to this lady and the next lady and the next lady and the next one and the next one and the next one. No, he will not lead you that way. God doesn't function that way. So that's what Evangelist was talking about when you are guided, when you are led, you're functioning in the house of God. You're active in the house of God. You're busy in the house of God. You're relating with everyone, not with evil intentions or with hidden intentions. But you are relating with everybody normally. And then at that time when you have that prompting of the Spirit, that I think it's time I want to settle down. The Lord will just, you ask the Lord for leadership, for guidance. And he will just guide you. And when he guides you, just similar to what Lizzie said, it will just be a straightforward process. There won't be much, much ado about the process. And it won't be a hidden thing. It will just lead you straight. And you just know this is the person. And when you know that's the person, it, I mean, you just go, you just talk. Pastor, I, this is the person. 
sister, this is the person, everything will just be very clear. And when it's clear that way, it's a marriage of light. It's a marriage of love. It's a marriage of grace. And indeed, the Holy Spirit will never lead you astray. Can somebody say amen? amen. It will never lead you astray. Which also covers several things that um, Deacon Neville also mentioned as well. Then there was a second part to that, the middle question. We said, is it biblical to, for a man to get on one knee? So, is that biblical? One person was to answer it. I think that was Dickiness Caroline. Where is she? Is it biblical for a man to get on one knee? Is that what the Bible says? Husband to be, get on one knee. Is that what the Bible says? Where did that come from? If I know if I give evangelists, evangelists will just tell us straight away, do God's thing God's way. So is it biblical? Pastor, there's no way in the Bible where a man has gone on one knee. So, uh, uh, so did Dick and Jimmy go on one knee? No, he refused. Oh, he did He refused. He said the only bow to God. <laughs> <laughs> said the only bow to God. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's... Before the Father. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Thank you. It's not biblical. <laughs> It's not biblical. It's not. It's not. It's not. All, all where you find marriage is being talked about, it's not biblical. But again, that does not mean that, um, you know, the Bible does tell us about Jesus washing the feet of his apostles. And for him to wash their feet, he went down on his knees. God Almighty went down on his knees. And then when he was done with that process, he told us to do likewise, every one of us. In other words, to walk in humility. So the, the, the origins of that, I haven't investigated the origins of that tradition, but I'm sure the origins of that must have come to humility. Just trying to say, oh, I love you so much and I am humble. You know, but otherwise, it's not in the Bible for a man to do that. And anyway, Satan can also get down on knees. We've seen tyrants go down on their knees to get something. That a man goes down on his knees to propose does not mean he will remain on his knees forever. The man who is on his knees proposing, I've seen situations in my years as a minister, I've seen situations whereby a man that went on his knees years back tells the woman, I'm done. I'm no longer ready to be on my knees. In fact, you are a tyrant, you are a this, you are a that. So getting down on the knees should not be the issue at all. In fact, the most important thing is, can that person get down on his knees before God? That's the important thing. It's not getting down on his knees for you. Can he get down on his knees for God? Genuinely, how many times does he go down on his knees for God? How humble is he towards God? That's the important thing. It's not how he can go down on his knees for you. So don't place yourself in the position of God. In fact, rather, I've seen situations whereby angels, men went down before angels and the angels said, get up. I am not God. So if you find somebody getting down on their knees for you, the natural response should be, mm -mm. climb up. I'm not God. That should be your drive. Don't take the place of God because you are a woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I, have I offended somebody this morning? <laughs> if I have, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but I have to tell you the truth. Don't take the place of God because you are a woman. Don't. Don't. God has blessed you. Allow yourself to function with humility towards everyone and encourage people to be humble towards God, not towards you. Hallelujah. Okay. So that deals with that issue. Oh, they have responded to me with anger or with love? With love. Okay. I love them. 